Indoors is a great place for doing macro because you don't have quite so many disturbances. Now I'm not suggesting for a moment that outdoors is bad, it isn't. I love being out there in the great wide open world. But stuff works well indoors with macro. That makes it an ideal thing to be practicing if it's pouring with rain. Now, we came in, it was nice and cloudy, the sun's just come out. I just grabbed this on the way in because I want to show you what I meant about the light on something delicate like a flower. There's a tiny, tiny bit, if I can just get it, there it is. Of, look, can you see that bit of sunlight? Direct sunlight on that flower. Let me just see, I'm gonna get right in your way and it's gonna be a rubbish picture, but I just want you to see. Yeah, see what I mean? That light's too harsh. There's too much shadow and too much shade. There's something else you may notice looking at that. The petals look as so though they've got coffee spilt on them. It's pollen from the stamen. The flower I shot right at the beginning, I spent a lot of time choosing it because it was a nice, clean, pretty much perfect flower. When you look at that from there, it looks fine really, doesn't it? But once you get in that close, any little imperfections will start to show up. So let's have a little look. What can we start taking pictures of? Let's give you some ideas. Let's start talking through a couple of shots. Well, I mean, I feel like Jamie Oliver being in this kitchen. It's a beautiful kitchen, it's not mine. I wish it was, belongs to my mate Alistair. So being as we're being Jamie Oliver, let's have a go with some cooking ingredients. Let's have a look, look, simple stuff. Bottle of olive oil, bottle of balsamic vinegar. This is a classic combination, I'll have you know. Now then, I said about the flour and the little bits of pollen. This bottle of balsamic vinegar has got a couple of little finger marks on it, little greasy finger marks that, you know, from skin has grease in it. So what it needs to, what we need to do is just give it a bit of a clean off and because I'm a bit of a bloke, I'm just going to rub it on my trousers. Jane's giving me the look. <laughs> right. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. It's much cleaner than it was. Let's give that another little, like that. Let's just pop that in there. You can take great shots of almost anything doing this. Tripod, I'm gonna use the tripod because it's great to keep things nice and still and those little movements of the body knock yourself out of focus if you're not very careful. The background doesn't matter too much when you're doing macro because when you're shooting macro and you've got that shallow depth of field, particularly if you use a wide aperture, it doesn't really matter much what's in the background because it'll all be blurred. It'll just be a sort of a mishy-mashy wash of sort of tones. The only thing to think about is what those tones are. <coughs> so, I'm not so sure about having the bread bin as the background colour, but because it's macro, I'm actually going to have this lovely golden-y sort of olive oil bottle and the balsamic vinegar. It's going to be a bit of a, you know, cookery type sort of a picture, I think. That's pretty good, almost right out the bat. Let's see what we've got. I'm going to tilt the camera. I want balsamic with an olive as they think. Oh look, I've got it, first go. That doesn't always happen. I'm using single point autofocus. That means I'm telling the camera which of the little dots in the viewfinder to use to focus. Go and get your camera book out. Look up single point autofocus. I can't tell you where it is on your camera because it will depend on the make and model. But single point autofocus means that you can choose which bit of the viewfinder you're focusing on. If you're on full auto, the camera might not know where to focus. It might choose the wrong part of the picture and then you'll be forever frustrated because you're not getting the result you want. Single point autofocus is the one to go and find in your book. I'm using single point autofocus and I focused about where that E is on the vinegar. Look through my viewfinder. It's looking good. Press the button. There we go. Did you hear that was quite a slow shutter speed? One eighth of a second, because there isn't a huge amount of light in here, but what light there is, is really good, nice quality light. That's quite a nice, you could see that in almost any restaurant, actually, that shot there. Now suppose I wanted to make the olives a bit more blurred, the ones that are on the, on the bottle there. I'm shooting at about f8, which is a middle of the roady sort of an aperture. But if I use a much wider aperture, I can put the emphasis far more strongly onto the balsamic. Okay, let's do it quickly. Let's just whiz that down. F3.3, that's gonna speed up the shutter speed and it's gonna decrease depth of field massively. Look at that, when we flick between those two, you can just see the difference between the olives and the 
balsamic vinegar. Now I want balsamic vinegar. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I want. Let's look for some more pictures because it's great, isn't it? You imagine a rainy day, your creative juices are flowing and you can't find anything to photograph. Have a look around your kitchen. Go and have a look anywhere, really. Um, what should we look at? Over here, we've got some little, I'm not sure what they are. He's a strange man, my mate Alistair. There's some little wooden Frenchman. I think it's a little Skittles. Maybe it's a French boule type of a thing. That'll make quite a nice picture. We've got a little forest of French faces with their stripy jumpers. It's getting close. Now, I'm not using the tripod this time, but I'm going to brace my elbows onto this work surface. That's going to stop me moving around. Autofocus, single point. I can move that point around by using my little multi-directional switch here. Looking through the viewfinder, I can choose where I want it. Now, I don't really want my Frenchman's face smack in the middle, so I'm moving the point of focus off to the right a bit, pop it on his nose, and squeeze the picture. Oh, I quite like that. He's backlit. Light's coming in through this window and wrapping around his face. As a background, we've got a soft kind of a mishmash of greens going on, which are the garden. That's quite a cool picture, isn't it? And look how easy that was. What else have we got in here? Oh, before we do, I just noticed that one of these Frenchmen has got a dirty face. I'm going to put them next to each other. You'll see what I mean about these little marks and things. If I put them together, focus on the guy with a dirty face. Hang on, move my focus point over. There it is. Look at that. You can really see the guy with a dirty face, can't you? Let's have a go at something else. Over here, we've got a toaster. It's a bit of a posh toaster, but it's quite smart and I really like it. Now look, abstracts. Abstracts always make for interesting pictures. We've got all this stainless steel going on with these shapes and lines. So we just move it out here a little bit into the light. I'm gonna do the elbow trick again. Really, you should use a tripod, but I don't want to drive you to sleep while I'm setting it up because it does take a moment. Don't think photography is all bang, 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 bang. It isn't. You've got to take your time. What are we? Oh, I like that already. Oh, I like that. It's getting fairly close. And notice I'm looking along these grooves, not straight at them because it's going to put them going off into the distance. We've got a shallow depth of field, which is going to give us a place to look in the picture. Otherwise, it would just be a repeating pattern. I want to put my focus, where are we going to put it? If we can get it to focus. The autofocus is being confused by all the shininess of the stainless. So I'm going to pop it onto manual and just do it myself. Oh, I like that. Oh, oh, I found it. Look at that. I want my focus to be about a third of the way into the picture. Oh, I rather like that. It's just a moody, you'd never know that was a toaster. And even though there are some tiny scratches in there, they're not very noticeable. It looks great. <clears throat> now, one more thing I'd just like to run through. I tried to show you my little grey card, white card reflector, and it didn't work too brilliantly, did it, when we were outside? So I want to show you how it can work. Now, look, let's take a lime. I'm going to sit it on the draining board here. Turn it out that way, because I like the subtler tones of green on the top here. Now, if you come down and just look at the lime, okay, this side of the lime is fairly bright, isn't it? We've got a bright side and a dark side. This window is brilliant for close-in macro-type photography lighting because the direct sun won't shine through it. If you have direct sun coming through, it'll be like the flower. It's going to be too harsh. This side will be too bright. Now, by adding a reflector, I'm not saying this is right, but I want you to see the effect because I really think it'd be great for you to go out and practice. If you just take a look at our lime here, as I bring the reflector in, see how the light's changed? This side is almost as bright as that side now. It's made it shinier. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but it's well worth having a little practice and a little play with something like that. Look at the difference. Do it again. It's really cool, isn't it? Now, you may, may want to go to a shop and buy a grey card with a white insert. That works really well. But you could do it with an envelope. You can do it with a sheet of paper. You could do it with a white plate, for goodness sake. Almost anything will work as a reflector. 
Let me take a picture of it very quickly because you notice there's even more in still images. Now, let's go in close. <clears throat> I just want the top of the line, just this little tip bit up here. That's cool, like that. All the shapes and textures. I'm gonna use a slightly smaller aperture. I'm gonna to go to about F8, I think. Let's press the, there it is. I'm gonna go a bit less than that. Six, better. Now, line that up. And take a picture. That's pretty cool. I'm just sitting it on the bench here. If I put the white of the reflector next to it, it's difficult to open with one hand. There we go, stand it up like that. And take the same shot. <clears throat> this time, it's gonna look a little bit different. There we go, and let's flick between them. Yeah, there's quite a difference, isn't there? See how it's completely smoothly lit in the reflector shot, whereas you have that lovely curved texture that's coming in from the side. Macro photography, it's all about going in close, getting in tight to things. It's a whole new world. All I've done just now is run around this room, a bit like a, bit like a headless chicken, trying to find things that I think will work. And there's still some not bad pictures to be gleaned from it. I particularly like our daisy out in the garden, and it was only through luck that the wind wasn't blowing and it kept still. Because to be honest, I expected a blurred picture at that moment. Saved by the bell, that's macro photography. Get in there and enjoy it. I'm going to show you some more stuff to do with macro. You don't necessarily have to have a dedicated macro lens. For now, go play.